This is a 4026 counter IC. I've provided it with a clock pulse along this yellow wire, which is represented by the red LED. The clock goes into the clock, and being a counter IC, it's happily counting the clock pulses. It's called a decade counter because it's counting every 10 pulses and then starting again. So it goes from 0 to 9. I've also attached a reset button, which is just here. When I press the reset button, it resets the counter back to zero. And as long as I press the reset button, keep it held down, the counter output stays at zero, even though I'm still getting clock pulses feeding into my clock. There's another useful output on here. This output is a divide by 10 output. I can represent it with another LED, this one here. It's low at the moment, but from zero, one, to all the way up to 4, this output stays high, and from 5 all the way through to 9, this output stays low. So the divide by 10 output is very useful because what it allows us to do is divide the frequency by 10. Useful for driving another counter if you have counters counting powers of 10. There are two other inputs I want to talk about, or not inputs exactly, but pins. There's this pin here, which is pin 2. This is the clock enable and it is currently connected to zero volts. Let's see what it does. If I take it out very carefully with a pair of pliers, it appears that it had no real effect. However, if I now connect the clock enable to positive, and you'll notice that while it's not connected to anything in particular, the output is indetermined. This is part of CMOS circuits. The pins have to be connected to something. If I connect the clock enable to positive with this orange wire, then what happens is that the clock is now ignored. The counter display isn't changing. Nor is the divide by 10 output. So the clock has effectively been inhibited. If I take this wire back out again, Again, not a lot seems to happen, because being a CMOS circuit, it just holds the value it just had. If I plug it back into zero, then the output starts changing, and the divide by 10 output works again. So pin 2 is very useful for stopping the counter counting any more clock pulses, but not actually resetting it, so it can hold a value on the display. The last one I want to talk about is this red wire here, which is connected to pin 3. This is the display enable. So if I take this one out, again, nothing seems to have changed. That's because it's a CMOS circuit, so it just holds onto the charge on the pin. But if I connect that to zero with my orange flying wire, you can now see that the display has gone away. It's cut the display off. However, the counter is still counting. It's still giving me a divide by 10 output. It's just that it's not driving the display. So this can be used to turn the displays off to save energy, or if you apply a square wave to that input, it can be used to make displays dimmer or brighter. So I can add that to my positive, and this is called the display enable. So in normal operation, as it's working now, you want the display enable to be high and the clock enable to be low. And that will make your counter drive the display and count from 0 to 9.